When I think of going out to the morning blinds at sunrise, it reminds me of Ravel's Bolero. You're there in the silence, and then you begin to hear a little bit of sound, and it draws to a greater and greater crescendo as the sun is coming up. When you're out there in the morning at 5 a.m. and you watch that sun coming up, it's just a fabulous sight. I can see 10,000 cranes right out in front of me. It's comparable to the wildebeest in Africa or the caribou in Alaska, but these are 600,000 birds that are flying north for the summer. I've always been rather nomadic. I've always been curious about what's over the next hill. And suddenly I began to be aware of these big gray birds. So I wanted to know more about them. And I began to look into tours. And the tour guide was a volunteer, Irv Nichols. So I started asking him more and more and more questions. We got to a point where we established a conversation with each other and she had a lot of questions to answer. So I said, well, you know, why don't we go out to dinner and talk about this? And as they say, the rest is history. <laughs> so after Sandra and I established our relationship, we decided after about a year that we were ready to migrate with the Sandhill Cranes also. And we would follow them through their migration all the way up to Alaska where their breeding grounds were. So we packed up her little Honda and we drove all the way up to Alaska. Stopping along the way at the different crane places, the Platte River, we went out to California and followed them up from California into Washington where we boarded a ferry. After departing the ferry and driving a thousand miles, we got to Homer, Alaska. We got to Homer in late April and it was snowed in. It was snowing when we got there and I thought, how are these cranes gonna do this? It was a hard journey for us, but for the cranes, well, sure enough, a week later they showed up and I looked out at Kachemak Bay and thought, oh my gosh, the cranes are here. Well, the cranes started arriving shortly after we were there and then they came in by the thousands and we would take people for walks, explain what we knew about cranes and people just have a, a real curiosity about this bird. The most frequently asked question, do they mate for life? Well, of course, they don't mate for life. They only mate for a few seconds, 30 seconds or so. But they are monogamous birds. They are always communicating. They have a unison call, which is really important in establishing and maintaining that pair bond. They have alarm calls, they have a contented purr, they have a lot of contact calls. You rarely hear cranes on the move that are totally quiet. And they dance, they celebrate life. Remarkable, alert, adaptable, communicative birds. In connecting people with cranes, Irv and I think it's equally important to connect people with the crane's habitats. All the world over, the 15 species of cranes in the world are associated with wetlands. Wetlands are in danger. And so it's really important for people to understand that without these habitats, without these wetland ecosystems, there would be a loss, not just of this bird, but of a lot of different kind of wildlife. Over the years now, working with Sandra and working with these birds, we've experienced a love for all birds, basically, and a depth of feeling that I never knew I had. When you see a flock of cranes flying overhead and you see them coming in for a landing and you can almost hear that landing gear come down as they hit the water. It's, it's an amazing thing with the sun setting in the background or coming up. Sandhill cranes are wonderful. They are just terrific birds. 
I'm grateful to Sandhill Cranes for a lot of things, for reconnecting me with nature, for introducing me to the volunteer, the nomadic naturalist volunteer lifestyle, for connecting me with Earth and uh, this great adventure that our life has become. Try to uh, pick out those moments in your life where one little thing has made a difference to you, you know, and that moment has changed your life. Maybe it was deciding to have children, and that's changed a lot of people's lives, of course. Maybe it's the moment you uh, decided, hey, I want to be a baker or a cook, <laughs> and you're in finances or something like that. Act on that. I just say it's, it, it'll be much more rewarding when you get to my age to look back on life and say, okay, I did what I wanted to do and I'm happy with it. In the back of your head, you know that you should have done this or you should have done that. Do it, do it before it's too late. The wonder is always there. The more you know about these birds, the more you appreciate them and the more fun it is. So it never gets old.